Hey Pro Shop Professionals, Alex Hoskins here with you. We understand how the balance holes are actually changing the bowling ball. We need to understand now what's going to happen if we simply plug the bowling ball. What's going to happen to those dynamics and how's that going to translate into ball motion down lane. So there's a few variables that are going to come into play. We have our thunder plug here, very popular plug used by a lot of us in the pro shop business. There's four major variables that are going to con contribute to the effect of ball plug. Those four variables are going to be the location, the size, the depth, and the weight of the bowling ball. Okay, those are our four biggest contributing variables to how that ball plug is going to influence both the dynamics and the ball motion of the bowling ball. On a side note, the density of the ball plug is going to matter but at Storm, we've tested all the different kinds of ball plugs that we have on the market, and they all have a very similar density regardless of what is advertised. So we're gonna forego density of ball plug in this because they're all gonna be extremely similar regardless of what brand that you use. First up, we have the location of the hole. So again, we're gonna have our simulations here through our engineering software, and let's take a look at what we have. So undrilled, these are gonna be numbers you're gonna be familiar with by the end of this section. 2.489 for the RG, we have 50 total differential and we have 15 intermediate differential. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put a hole in two vastly different spots. One zero inches, so straight through the pin, and one six and three quarters inches, which is very far away from the pin. This is gonna be a standard hole size of one inch in diameter and it's gonna go three inches deep so that it's apples to apples in comparison. The only difference here is the location of where that hole is. With everything that we talked about in the previous section, these numbers should make sense for what's happening when the balance hole is in here. The zero inch one, we see a significantly higher RG value, we see a lower differential value, and you'll notice the intermediate is completely unchanged because we're nowhere near the Y or the Z axis in this case. On the six and three quarter ball, we can see the RG remains relatively low. We can see total differential goes up significantly. And we can also see the intermediate differential goes up as well because we're straight through the PSA. These are consistent with what we showed you in the previous slides. What happens when we add some plug into the bowling ball now? Let's take a look at the zero inch pin. You're gonna notice that that RG value kind of falls somewhere in between the two, but it's actually still a little bit higher than what it was when it was initially not drilled. Take a look at the total differential value. It went from 50 all the way down to 34, comes all the way back to 45. So a lot of that change in total differential has been brought back, but not quite 100% of it. Take a look at intermediate staying the same. That should make sense. That holds nowhere near either of those axes, so it's gonna affect it the same uh, regardless of it. Looking at the six and three quarter ball, take a look at what happens. RG value, once again, a little bit higher overall than even the undrilled number. Take a look at total diff. It goes from 50 all the way up to 63, returns back to 52. So we've gotten almost all of that differential back that we didn't have before. So think about that. Most of the balance holes that were used uh, in competition were used to help make the bowling ball hook a little bit more. You're gonna see a big difference if your customer has the ball that has 63 total differential after it's been drilled, and then you plug that hole and it goes all the way back to 52, they're gonna see a significant change in ball motion as that ball goes down the lane. You'll see the intermediate differential acts the exact same as the total differential because it's uh, directly on the Y axis, which is gonna change between the Y and the Z with, when referring to intermediate differential. Next up, size of the hole is extremely important. So we have four different scenarios here. We have four different size holes. They're all drilled at three inches deep. Our first picture here is a half inch hole. Then we go to a three quarter inch hole, a one inch hole. And finally on the far right, we have a one and a quarter inch hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with you the drilled numbers for each of those. If you have to pause this part, it's fine. There's a lot of numbers on the screen. We're gonna go through it really quickly here. Everything that we talked about in the last section should make sense with this. You're gonna see 2.489 for the RG value. Take a look at what happens no matter how large that hole gets. The RG value stays relatively low. That's because that hole is six and three quarter inches from the pin. That should make sense. Take a look at total diff. It's going up as we get bigger and bigger with that hole. Remember what I said about the size of the hole amplifying the change 
in the RG and the differential value. That's what you're gonna see there. Intermediate, you're gonna see that behaves the exact same as uh, total differential. Again, we're straight through the y-axis, which the y and the z are in reference for intermediate differential. So what happens when we plug those bowling balls? What happens when we plug that hole? Undrilled numbers are still there. Take a look at how close we get. Let's look at RG first. It remained relatively unchanged here, but as we go over and plug the bowling ball, you're gonna notice that the RG value actually creeps up a little bit the, wide, the uh, bigger that that hole gets because you're changing the density of the material on the inside of the bowling ball. So overall, RG values are gonna go up as you plug the bowling ball. That's gonna cause your ball to get a little bit further down the lane and not wanna qu quite hook as much. Take a look at total differential values. They're all extremely close to that 50 undrilled number that we started with. So a little bit of that hole is gonna bleed through, but not very much. You're gonna get about 80 to 85% of those dynamics returned to you once that balance hole's plugged. You'll also notice the intermediate behaves the same as the total differential there. So we're getting a lot of those dynamic changes that we got from the balance hole, we're giving them all back when we plug that balance hole. Next up, we have the depth of the hole. So again, we have four different scenarios here. We have a one inch depth on the left, two inch depth, three inch depth, and finally a four inch depth there on the far right. So let's once again, look at some drilled numbers here and see how they're affecting the bowling ball here. What I want you to notice here is look at the RG value. You'll see we started our 2.489 that we were at. For our first two depths, which is one inch and two inches deep, we only have the RG value actually goes down a little bit. Again, this is because if we're less than two and an eighth inches deep, we're not far enough into the middle of the ball to significantly increase the RG value. But take a look at what happens when we get to the three and finally the four inch depth, you can see that RG value starts going the other direction because we're taking that heavy dense mass out of the middle, we're making the outside appear heavier. Take a look at total differential here. We go from 50 up to 55 to 58 to 61, but then once we go from three to four, we're past two and three quarter inches deep. So we're actually coming into where all those axes merge together. We don't see that total differential just go completely up. Remember back to that graph that they leveled off once you got to both ends. That's what you're seeing there. Same thing with intermediate differential. It's going up quite a bit until you get to those merged axes, then it starts to kind of level out for you. Moving over to the plugged numbers here, let's take a look. You'll see once again, the RG value getting a little bit higher, especially as that hole gets deeper and deeper. Total differential, I think in all of these simulations, the most that we've seen come through is 52 total diff. We were all the way up at 61 here. So again, your customer is gonna see a big difference between a ball with 61 diff with a balance hole compared to a plug ball with 52 diff. Take a look at intermediate, behaving the exact same as total differential. Again, they're just using the Y and the Z axis as the reference instead of the X and the Y axis. Depth of the hole, extremely important. Last one up here, we have the weight of the bowling ball. So to understand how plug affects lighter or heavier equipment, we need to understand what changes are happening in regards to density when the weight's changed. So what we'll do first is we'll look at the density equation. Density equals mass divided by volume. So how heavy something is divided by how much space it's in is gonna give us an idea of how tightly packed in there it is, which is the density. We can rearrange that using some simple math and we can solve that for mass. So mass equals density times volume. So how tightly something's packed in to how much space is gonna give you how heavy that that weighs. So the big takeaway there is we can't change the volume of a bowling ball, right? We have a set guideline from USB-C of eight and a half to 8.595 inches for that bowling ball to be in size. So in order for us to lower the weight of the bowling ball, we have to lower the density of the materials that are on the inside of the bowling ball. Since the density of the ball plug does not change regardless of what the change is in the weight of the bowling ball, it's gonna have more effect on lighter weight bowling balls. That density of that plug is gonna appear heavier because the lighter weight materials on the lighter bowling ball are gonna 
make it appear heavier. Likewise, if we go to a heavier bowling ball, that plug isn't gonna have quite as much effect because those materials in there are much more dense. Depending on the size, the location, and the depth of that hole, this could either increase or decrease the dynamics of the bowling ball. Now, based on that last section, you're gonna have a pretty good idea on if it's gonna increase it based on where it's at or if it's gonna decrease it based on where it's at. All right, now that we've proven how well this program works, last thing you need to know is where to download uh, the Storm Layout Adapter. If we go to stormbowling.com, we go under that same brand and marketing tab that we found the VLS 2.0, we look at the left side of the screen, we see that download section. Under the drill specs, we're gonna have the Storm Layout Adapter there, free of charge for both pro shops and bowlers to try out. I urge you strongly, if you have a layout that you really liked with a balance hole, give that layout adapter a try. It's gonna give you a much more similar ball motion than just plugging that hole or utilizing that same layout without a balance hole.